211. Crown him with many crowns. Crown him with many crowns. The lamb upon a stroll. Ah, how the heavenly and time crown the drums are all music but his own. Away, my soul, I'm seen. Oh, of him it died for thee, and ail him as thou march as thy marshless king through all eternity. Crown him the virgin son, the God incarnate born, whose hand those crimson trophies won, which now is brought adorn fruit of the mystic rose, as of that rose, the steel, the root whence mercy ever flows, the babes of Bethlehem. Crown him the Lord of peace, whose power a scepter awaits, from pole to pole that was make cease, and all the Prayer and praise, his reign shall know no end. And round his pierced feet, far flowers of paradise extend, their frankness ever sweet. Crown him the Lord of years, the potentate of time, creator of the rolling spheres. In a fable sublime, all hail, Redeemer, hail, ah, for thou hast died for me. Thy praise shall never, never fail throughout eternity.
according to St. Matthew. The Gospel according to St. Matthew. Matthew 26. Matthew 26. And it came to pass, when Jesus had finished all these sayings, he said unto his disciples, You know that after two days is the feast of the Passover, and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. Then assembled together the chief priests and the scribes and the elders of the people, unto the palace of the high priest who was called Caiaphas, and consulted that they might take Jesus by subtlety and kill him. But they said, Not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar among the people. Now when Jesus was in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment, and poured it on his head as he sat at meat. But when the disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, To what purpose is this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. When Jesus understood it, he said unto them, Why troubled ye the woman? For she hath wrought a good work upon me. For ye have the poor always with you, but me ye have not always. For in that she hath poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. Verily I say unto you, Wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this, that this woman hath done, be told for a memorial of her. Then one of the twelve, called Judas Iscariot, went unto the chief priests and said unto them, What will ye give me? And I will deliver him unto you. And they covenanted with him for thirty pieces of silver. And from that time he sought opportunity to betray him. Now the first day of the feast of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? And he said, Go into the city to such a man, and say unto him, The master saith, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them, and they made ready the Passover. Now when the even was come, he sat down with the twelve, and as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you that one of you shall betray me. And they were exceeding sorrowful, and began every one of them to say unto him, Lord, is it I? And he answered and said, He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. The Son of Man goeth as it is written of him, but woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he had not been born. Then Judas, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? He said unto him, Thou hast said. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, and blessed it, and brake it, and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup, and gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung in him, they went out into the Mount of Olives. Then saith Jesus unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. But after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this night before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. Peter said unto him, Though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. Likewise also said all the disciples. Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here, while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here, and watch with me. And he went a little further, and fell on his face, and prayed, saying, O my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And he cometh unto the disciples, and findeth them asleep, and saith unto Peter, What, could ye not watch with me one hour? 
watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away again the second time and prayed, saying, O my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then cometh he to his disciples and saith unto them, Sleep on now and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that doth betray me. And while he yet spake, lo, Judas, one of the twelve, came, and with him a great multitude with swords and staves from the chief priests and elders of the people. Now he that betrayed him gave them a sign, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that same is he. Hold him fast. And forthwith he came to Jesus and said, Hail, Master, and kissed him. And Jesus said unto him, Friend, wherefore art thou come? Then came they and laid hands on Jesus and took him. And behold, one of them which were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck a servant of the high priests and smote off his ear. Then said Jesus unto him, Put up again thy sword into his place. For all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father, and he shall presently give me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled, that thus it must be? In that same hour said Jesus to the multitudes, Are ye come out as against a thief with swords and staves for to take me? I sat daily with you, teaching in the temple, and ye laid no hold on me. But all this was done that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. And they that had laid hold on Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. But Peter followed him afar off unto the high priest's palace and went in and sat with the servants to see the end. Now the chief priests and elders and all the council sought false witness against Jesus to put him to death but found none. Yea, though many false witnesses came, yet found they none. At the last came two false witnesses and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. And the high priest arose and said unto him, Answerest thou nothing? What is it which these witness against thee? But Jesus held his peace. And the high priest answered and said unto him, I adjure thee by the living God that thou tell us whether thou be the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus saith unto him, Thou hast said. Nevertheless, I say unto you, Hereafter shall ye see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power, and coming in the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest rent his clothes, saying, He hath spoken blasphemy. What further need have we of witnesses? Behold, now ye have heard his blasphemy. What think ye? They answered and said, He is guilty of death. Then did they spit in his face and buffeted him, and others smote him with the palms of their hands, saying, Prophesy unto us, thou Christ, who is he that smote thee? Now Peter sat without in the palace, and a damsel came unto him, saying, Thou also wast with Jesus of Galilee. But he denied before them all, saying, I know not what thou sayest. And when he was gone out into the porch, Another maid saw him, and said unto them that were there, This fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth. And again he denied with an oath, I do not know the man. And after a while came unto him they that stood by, and said to Peter, Surely thou also art one of them, for thy speech bewrayeth thee. Then began he to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man. And immediately the cock crew. And Peter remembered the word of Jesus, which said unto him before the cock crow, Thou shalt deny me thrice. And he went out and wept bitterly. May God help us to be doers of the word. Amen. Deeper Life Bible Church Choir Ministrations from nations across the world.
seems so heavy my trouble sometimes many and there are times I feel hope is gone but in my darkest heart is my strong and my sister and Jesus gives me strength to carry on so I Thank you. 
Tun. Jetzt bin ich da, es an. Still cry, forgive them, Father. Then he can give the strength to carry on. So I'll carry on. I'll carry on. Until my In the city, joy in your life, joy in your family, and joy everywhere in Jesus' name. It's a prophecy specifically for you this December 2022. If Jesus takes off his hand from upholding the earth, the stars, the moon, the sun, everything will collapse. But Fret not. GCK Authority has announced the next level move. Christ 
comes and intervenes in your life. In your spiritual there, you will not die. Christ, your great transformer, this December will lead you to triumph. Zoom into your December 2022. From the land of honor and integrity comes two in one GCK live in Ekiti State, Southwest Nigeria. The Global Crusade and Retreat, December 22 to 27, 2022. A new level of Impact Academy for Youth, Young Adults and Professionals. Titled Recharge to Excel. December 27, 2022. At 0600 hours GMT, all broadcasts live on satellite, radio, television, and all our social media platform. Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumoyi says, You'll praise God. Amen. You'll give your testimony. And more, as excellent worship comes from the USA with Jonathan White, our guest music minister. GCK, the gospel to every creature. Alpha Location Choir, please. Welcome everyone tonight in Jesus' name. And I pray that our hearts will thirst after God. And he'll load us with his blessings in Jesus' name. Let's close our eyes for prayer. Father, we thank you and bless your name. Thank you for the thirst, the passion, the desire, the longing you have given our hearts. Thank you for all our brethren, brothers and sisters, young and old, in all the places we are gathered together. We are praying, O oh Lord, as you have promised, you bless all your people tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Satisfy the longing of every heart. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're reading from Psalm 42. And I'm reading from verse 1. As the heart panted after the water brooks, so panted my soul after thee, O God. Here is a psalmist telling the Lord personally that as the heart, as that animal runs after, longs after, and desires the water because it's very thirsty. He says, so my soul panted after thee, O God. He wanted something from God, something spiritual, something physical, something for the wisdom and the power and the knowledge to rule the nation. And it says, my heart is panting after you. It says in verse 2, my soul thirsted for God. It says, although I have the things of the world, the place, the position, and the property and everything, yet there is something that all this world cannot offer. And because of that, my very soul is panting after God, and I'm thirsty for him, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? As you look at Psalm 61, Psalm 61, reading from verses 1 and 2. It says in Psalm 61, verse 1, Hear my cry, O God, attend unto my prayer. It says it's not just a silent passion. It's not just something quiet within me. Some people will say, yes, I thirst after God, but I keep it under check. I keep it under control. I don't want to voice it out. I know what I'm meditating on in my heart. But the man said, it's my cry. It's my calling. It's my passion. And I'm really going out for God. It says, attend unto my prayer. 
verse 2 it says from the end of the earth will i cry unto thee understanding that this is a king understanding that this is the highest uh, uh, position that he held in the whole nation and yet he said apart from all that my heart is still seeking after God from the ends of the earth. Wherever I find myself, I will cry unto thee when my heart is overwhelmed. Here is the reason is passionate about it. Here is the reason is a panting after God. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. If you could say that in your heart, that you know there's still a higher level a higher experience, something greater than what you have got. And you are telling the Lord, and you are telling the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. You are telling the Lord, and you are crying unto the Lord about it. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. He follows that up in Psalm 63. It says in Psalm 63, O God, thou art my God. He said, my punching is not because I'm backsliding. My seeking you is not because I am backsliding. I still have the witness of the Spirit in my heart. I'm a child of God. Thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. Are you so busy in your life that you say, I don't have time for quiet time, fellowship with God? We are talking about David here. If you look at the title of the psalm, it's the psalm of David, a king. Many battles to fight. Many things to look into, and yet it says, Early will I seek thee. Early in the morning will I seek thee. Early in my life will I seek thee. Early in my profession will I seek thee. Early in the ministry will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee. In a dry and thirsty land where no water is. It goes on in verse 2 to see thy power and thy glory. It says, the reason I'm seeking after you, and the reason I'm panting, the reason I'm longing, the reason I, I want to see more of you is that I want to see your power. In every area of my life, I want to see your power. In every area of ministry, I want to see your power and thy glory. So as I have seen thee in the sanctuary, it tells us in verse 3, because thy loving kindness is better than life. My leaves shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live. It says, while I live, I don't have any plan going back, sliding back, forgetting you. While I'm alive, I'm going to keep on seeking your blessing. And I'll keep on seeking thee. I will lift up my hands in thy name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness. It says, I'm seeking this not for the physical. I'm seeking this not for my body. I'm seeking this for my soul. And I know my soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness. And my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. I pray that that will be a testimony in Jesus' name. Tonight, we're looking at the message, Satisfying Thirsty Souls in a Dry Land. Satisfying Thirsty Souls in a Dry Land. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the panting and the passion of a thirsty soul. Are you thirsty? You'll pant, you'll have passion, you're thirsty for God. For experiences in the Lord, for spiritual things in the Lord, and your heart is desiring, and you want to have more of God, there will be panting, there will be longing, there will be desire, there will be prayer, there will be passion. The passion or the panting and the passion of a thirsty soul. Point number two, the prayer and the praise of a trusting soul. You're thirsty, and you know it's only from God you can have your thirst satisfied. There will be prayer, there will be praise, and you'll be trusting the Lord. You know that what you are asking for, to satisfy your soul, satisfy your longing, 
and to satisfy your spiritual desire. You want to go higher in the Lord, further in the Lord, stronger in the Lord. You are trusting the Lord. It will happen. It will happen in Jesus' name. The prayer and the praise of a trusting soul. Point number three, the priority. If you really have the longing, if you really have the passion, if you really have the desire, you will make it a priority in your life. It will come to the front burner. It will come to the first number one in the list of your desires. You desire material things, physical things, domestic things. You desire some mental things. You desire some things in the community. But if you're really panting after God, desiring after God, longing after God, there'll be number one, which will be spiritual, the priority and the pursuit of a transformed soul. The priority and the pursuit of a transformed soul. Number one, the panting and the passion of a thirsty soul. We're coming back to Psalm 42. In Psalm 42, we're reading from verse 1. And here we see the expression of the panting and the passion of a soul that is thirsty before God. It says in verse 1, As the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. How do you know the heart is panting after the water brooks? Number one, by going in the direction of the water brooks. I will not go up a tree. will not go to a desert. We're not going to a dry place. He has located the water brooks and is going in that direction. How do you know that the heart is panting and longing? Because it's not walking slowly. It's not going sluggishly. It's actually running, galloping, and going without any distraction. How do you know that a heart is panting in after the water brooks. When he gets to the water brooks, he doesn't look here and there and become a kind of uninterested. He stays there and he drinks the water to the full. How do you know a soul that is panting after God is going in the direction where he can find the word of God, the will of God, the way of God, the grace of God, the power of God, the satisfaction in God is going in that direction. How do you know a soul that is panting after God and thirsty after God is running, literally? It's not a, a person that, you know, is sluggish and lukewarm and lethargic. The service should have started, whatever I meet, I meet. Whatever I miss, I miss. He doesn't have that attitude. He's literally hurrying up to get to the place of the blessing of God so that he loses nothing. As the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after the O oh God. I do recognize a person that is his soul is thirsty and panting after God when he gets to the place when God will bless him. Like the heart gets to the water brooks, he stays there. He's patient there. He's rested there. He's seeking the Lord there. He wants everything there. He's not distracted by anything. His heart is lying. Everything is God. He's there and he's saying, Oh Lord, today I want more of you. Whatever I've got, I want more of that. Whatever I've got, I want more of you. As the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsteth for God. My soul thirsteth for God. And everything that belongs to God, I want to get to him, to heaven, when I die. My soul, my heart, my mind, Panteth for God, for the living God. 
when shall I come and appear before God? Tells us in Psalm 143, Psalm 143, reading from verse 6, Psalm 143, verse 6, the Psalm of David, I stretch forth my hands unto thee, my soul thirsteth after thee, as a thirsty land, my soul thirsteth after thee. As you examine your life, and you see what your neighbors are running after, they run after money, they run after position in the world, they run after property, landed property, they run after going there and going there, they run after silver and gold, they run after what they think will make their life comfortable. And then many people, as they do that, the higher they go in the world, the faster they go in the world, the lower they go in the things of God. And they reserve, and then they come back, they're retreating, they're getting less. But now he says, I stretch forth my hands unto thee. My soul is thirsty after thee, as a thirsty land. Hear me speedily, O Lord, my spirit faileth. Hide not thy face from me. It says, I long for fellowship, your own fellowship. I long for intimacy, intimacy with the Almighty God. Hide not thy face from me, lest I be like unto them that go down into the pit. Cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning, for in thee do I trust. In thee do I trust. Cause me to know the way wherein I should walk. Says that's why I pant after you. That's why I thirst after you. I do not know the way. The way to your destination. And the way to my destiny that you have ordained for me. Only you know that way, that destiny, and that thing you have planned for me. Because I don't know, that's why I long, I desire, I pant, I pray. I want to know the way wherein I should walk. For I lift up my soul unto thee. I lift up my soul unto thee. Isaiah chapter 44. What are we panting after? What are we longing after? What are we desirous for? What are we praying for? What are we looking for? I say, chapter 44, reading from verse 3. I say, chapter 44, reading from verse 3. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty. That's the promise of God. It says he himself will pour the refreshing water, the reviving water, the cleansing water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thy offspring. It starts by talking about water, the water that refreshes us, the water that renews us, the water that revives us, the water that cleanses us. And I move on, and it says, I'm talking about the Spirit, the Holy Spirit upon us, to be born of God, born of the Spirit, to be sanctified, sanctified by the Spirit, to be baptized and to be filled and to be immersed and to be empowered by the Spirit, to be renewed by the Spirit, to be revived by the Spirit. I will pour my Spirit upon thy seed. The people who thirst and the people who long after God. And it says, I'll pour my blessing 
upon thy offspring. Verse 4, and they shall spring up as among the grass, as willows by the water causes. One shall say, I am the Lord's. Your testimony will be clear. You say, I am of the Lord. Another shall call himself by the name of Jacob. Another shall subscribe with his sand unto the Lord, and so name himself by the name of Israel. I pray that will be true for you in Jesus' name. Psalm 55, verse 1. 55, verse 1. O oh, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. In the plural. Everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. The water of life. Come ye to the waters. The water of strength. Come ye to the waters. The water of the spirit. Come ye to the waters. The water of the word whereby we are cleansed and sanctified. Come ye to the waters. He that has no money, come ye, buy and eat. Ye come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. He invites us to come, invites us to seek, invites us to buy, invites us to pray, invites us to seek his face. And then he tells us in verse 12, For ye shall go out with joy, and be led forth with peace. Well, have peace, and peace that passes understanding in Jesus' name. That's why we're panting after him. That's why we're seeking him. That's why we're longing after him. When there's confusion or commotion, when there's sorrow or sadness, and you want him to give you peace that the world cannot give. You want him to give you joy and happiness. You want him to give you satisfaction in life. He says, he shall go out with joy. Amen. And be led forth with peace. Amen. And the mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing. And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Chapter 48 of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 48. I'm reading from verse 18. Oh, that thou art akin unto my commandments, then at thy peace being as a river, and the righteousness as the waves of the sea. That's why we're seeking the Lord, so that our peace will multiply. Your peace will multiply. Peace in your heart. Peace in your soul. Peace at home. Peace in your neighborhood. Peace in your community. Peace in the place of work. Peace in your family in Jesus' name. And your righteousness as the waves of the sea. Righteousness will multiply and be deep and be great and be high in Jesus' name. Look at verse 21. And he thirsted not when he led them through the desert. You'll never go through a wilderness without abundant supply in Jesus' name. He caused the waters to flow out of the rock for them. He claimed the rock also, and the waters gushed out. That experience will come back again. It's in Isaiah chapter 41, reading from verse 17, Isaiah Chapter 41, reading from verse 17. In verse 17, when the poor and the needy seek water, and there is none, and their tongue faileth for thirst, I, the Lord, will hear them. He'll do that tonight. You'll be longing and panting 
and desiring and you have not got enough of what you are seeking, tonight is a night of blessing. A night of outpouring. And a night when the Lord will satisfy everyone in Jesus' name. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. I will open rivers in high places and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. I will plant in the wilderness the cedar and cheetah tree and the macho and the oil tree I will search in the desert the fir tree and this and the pine and the box tree together and now in verse 20 that they may see I will see tonight I will have tonight I will receive tonight what my heart is longing for, I will have tonight in Jesus' name. Say that for yourself. That they may see and know and consider and understand together that the hand of the Lord has done this. You must have that tonight. Fulfillment tonight in Jesus' name. A pouring of blessing tonight in Jesus' name. And the Holy One of Israel has created it. We're coming to Matthew chapter 5, reading from verse 6. Matthew chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 6. In Matthew chapter 5, reading from verse 6, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. Tell me what you'll find there. Tell me, tell me. Are you wondering why maybe you don't have the righteousness you have been hearing about? Have you wondered why you don't have the ideal, the perfect, what you're seeking, what you're looking for? The righteousness. Have you wondered why your righteousness of today is not higher, is not greater, is not purer, is not wider, is not more extensive than the righteousness of yesteryears? Because there's no thirst. Because you are not thirsty. Because you are not hungry. It says, blessed are they all, all of us. Everyone that hungers and thirsts, everyone that pants, everyone that desires, everyone that is not putting righteousness on the shelf, everyone longing, everyone passionate about it, everyone praying about it, everyone that says, I'm not satisfied, it says, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. Tell me what will follow. Tell me out aloud, for they shall be filled. The righteousness will not be minimal at the lower part of the glass of the cup. The righteousness will not have fill the cup, have filled the heart. The righteousness will, be fill, will fill your cup, will fill your heart, will be overflowing in Jesus' name. But you know, it takes thirst. It takes desire after caring about such righteousness for your heart to punch at it and for your heart to desire it so much more than any other sin. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. We shall be filled. We shall be filled. You'll be filled in Jesus' name. Righteousness at home, righteousness in the heart, righteousness in the house of God, righteousness in the place of work, righteousness that is seen and known 
righteousness overflowing in our lives in Jesus' name. John chapter 7. John chapter 7. I'm reading from verse 37. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Any man thirst, let him come. When we're really thirsty, we'll go to the Lord in prayer. If any man is thirsty, let him come unto me. We'll go to the Lord who is able to satisfy that thirst. Who is able to fill us with the Holy Ghost? Who is able to saturate us with the spiritual gifts? Who is able to make the dry land like a stream of water, a pool of water? If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Rivers of living water. Rivers of living water. No part of your life will be dry. Your mind will not be dry. Your soul will not be dry. Your spirit will not be dry. Your heart will not be dry. And even your body will not be dry. Blessing in every compartment of your life outpouring in every area of your life. Your soul, your spirit will be refreshed. Your body will recover if you are sick. The blessing of the Lord will flow through every part of your life in Jesus' name. It says, out of his belly shall flow rivers, plural, of living water. But they speak he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Now he's glorified, the Holy Ghost will be given. I said the Holy Ghost will be given. Look at Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Verse 33, Acts chapter 2, verse 33. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth this which ye now see and hear. We'll see it in your life. We'll hear about it in your testimony outpouring of the Spirit of God upon your life in Jesus' name. You are thirsty? I said you are thirsty? Blessings will come. Revelation chapter 21. Revelation chapter 21. I'm reading from verse 6. And he said unto me, It is done. It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give. Here is the promise. I will give. An unfailing promise, I will give. An infallible promise, I will give. An irreversible promise from the Lord, I will give. Tonight it will happen. I said tonight it will happen. You will not go back home dry. You'll not go back home weary. You'll not go back home tired and worn out in Jesus' name. I will give unto him that is the thirst of the fountain of the water of life. Tell me the last word freely. It is for you tonight in Jesus' name. Uh, Revelation chapter 22 verse 17. Revelation 22, verse 17. And the Spirit and the bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come. 
and let him that is a thirst come. He says, if you are thirsty tonight for the blessing of God, for the overflowing blessing of the Lord, he says, tonight come, and whosoever will, you see there, whosoever will, I said, is she there? Whosoever will, are you there? Let him take of the water of life freely. Take of the water of life freely. Number one is the panting and the passion. But then you have to pray and praise the Lord. You need to open your heart, open your vessel, open your mouth wide before you will feel it. That makes us to point number two in Psalm 42. Psalm 42, we're reading from verses 4 and 5. Psalm 42, verses 4 and 5. When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me. You cannot pour out your soul with the lid on the vessel, with the cover on the vessel. You have to remove the cover. You cannot seal your mouth, close your mouth, and then pour out your soul. You have to open your mouth. I pour out my soul in me, for I had gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God. You know, many people do not understand the house of God is the house of prayer. The house of God is where we come to pour out our body, pour out our sorrow, pour out our thirst, pour out our desires. He say, I pour out my soul. As I've gone with the multitude, I went with them to the house of God. With my voice, with the voice of joy and praise, and with the multitude, I kept the holy day not holy day, the holy day, the people that take the holy day as a holy day. They won't come to church, for them it's holy day. It's for picnic, it's for photographs, it's for the beach, it's for whatever. But it says, because I have a need, and I want to pour out my soul, I want to seek the Lord, I take that day as a holy day. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God. As you come to the house of God, like you have come today, your hope will be realized. Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him. The devil wants me to stop praising him. I shall yet praise him. The problems come so that I can stop praising him. I shall yet praise him. The doubts come so that I will not have the answer to my prayer, but I will have the answer to my prayer. You will have the answer to your prayer. I will yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Look at verse 8. Yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime. And in the night, his song shall be with me, and my prayer unto the God of my life, the prayer and the praise of a trusting soul. Psalm 62. We're looking at verse 8. Psalm 62, verse 8. Trust in him at all times. Trust in him. At all times, trust in him. Tell me, when you are sad, trust in him. When you are sick, trust in him. When you feel dry, trust in him. When you are at a crossroad, trust in him. When it appears things are upside down in the family, trust in him. Everything will come the right side up in Jesus' name. Trust in him at all times. The ye people, pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. For me, God is a refuge. 
he will not fail you he will not fail me he will not fail you when you are in trouble he will answer your prayer from tonight and every day as you pour out your soul in prayer as you pour out your soul in praise while you are praying and praising the lord the answers will come down from heaven he will not deny you you will not be denied psalm 46 verse 1 psalm 46 god is our refuge and strength a very present help in trouble read that again god is my refuge and strength a very present help in trouble read that again now god is my refuge a, a, and strength a very present help in trouble no trouble will drown you you will not stop this journey halfway the reason god has called you is going to fulfill in jesus name only pray only praise the lord and trust him with your soul and your answer will come in jesus name verse 2 therefore will not we fear any person afraid there therefore will we not fear i said anybody afraid there some people have they are afraid of this our country are you afraid some people are afraid of the powers of the air principalities and powers are you afraid some people are afraid in the day afraid in the night are you afraid some people are afraid of the economy are you afraid some people they have jobs and they have everything you know, but they're still afraid they're still afraid it says therefore will we not fear therefore shall i not fear i didn't hear you let the heavens hear you let even the devil hear you therefore will we not fear as a church we're not afraid the future of the church is in the hand of the almighty god our present dominion is in the hand of the almighty god therefore will we not fear though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea whatever we hear whatever we see whatever we feel whatever people are spreading all the rumors we will not fear though the waters thereof roar and be troubled though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof there is a river the streams whereof shall make glad the city of god we shall be glad the holy place of the tabernacles of the most high god is of the midst of her is god there with you i said is god there with you god the savior you see there the strengthener you see there the healer you see there the redeemer you see there god is in the midst of her she shall not be moved god shall help her god shall help you god shall help us tell me the rest tell me the rest say it say it let me hear you god will not be late on your case god will not be late as you pray and as you praise the lord right early in time the blessing will come upon you in jesus name second chronicles chapter 20 second chronicles chapter 20 i'm reading from verse 3 second chronicles 20 verse 3 and Jehoshaphat feared you've gone beyond that level now 
I said, you've gone beyond that level now. And Jehoshaphat feared, but you will not fear. And set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And then we come to verse 12. Verse 12, it says, Oh, our God, you see this, pouring out his soul in time of trouble, in time of danger, in time of insecurity, in time of sickness, in time of perplexity, in time of poverty, in time of joblessness. When you pour out your soul, everything will turn around. Oh, our God, will thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. We are longing after him, our eyes are upon thee. We are panting after him, our eyes are upon thee. Will he answer your prayer? Verse 20, verse 20. And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God. This is the person who was afraid in verse 3. And now in verse 20, believe in the Lord your God. So shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. Anybody believing the man of God, the word of God that he speaks there today? Where are you? You are prospered already. Yeah. You are delivered already. Yeah. That problem is over. Verse 21, and when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord that they should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and to say, praise the Lord. Somebody shall praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Somebody shall praise the Lord. While the Ammonites are still preparing to fight against you, somebody shall praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. While the Moabites are still on their way and they are bragging, I will finish him. I will finish her. Somebody praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. While it appears your body is still telling another story. I am sick. I am weak. I don't know. I'm feeling somebody shall praise the Lord. He says, praise the Lord for his mercy endureth for how long? The mercy of the Lord will be upon you forever. From now, from henceforth till forever, mercy, mercy, and mercy upon your life in Jesus' name. Verse 22, and when they began to sing, and when they began to sing, problem will not take the song out of your mouth. Sickness will not take the song out of your mouth. And all the sorrow and the sadness and the complaints of the world will not take the song out of your mouth in Jesus' name. And to praise the Lord sent ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, Mount Seir, which were come against Judah. Tell me. I said, tell me about your enemies. Tell me about your oppressors. Tell me about the people that want to destroy you. Tell me about what you were afraid of yesterday. And they were smitten. I rejoice with you. Congratulations. I say congratulations. Your battle is over. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitant of Seir, utterly to slay and to destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, every one of your enemies, 
helped to destroy another. And when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude, and behold, what am I seeing here? And behold, and behold, there were dead bodies falling to the earth, and none escaped. None escaped. You will sing again. You will shout again. You will praise the Lord again. Psalm 40, Psalm 40, we're reading from verse 3. Psalm 40, verse 3. And he has put a new song in my mouth. I said, he has put a new song in my mouth. Even praise unto our God. Many shall see it. I see you singing. Many shall see it. I see you rejoicing. Many shall see it. I see you testifying. And fear and they shall trust in the Lord. Because of what God will do in your life, many will trust in the Lord. What God will do on your child, many will trust in the Lord. What God will do on your daughter-in-law, your son-in-law, many will trust in the Lord because of you. What God will do on your daddy, on your mommy, many will rejoice and they trust in the Lord in Jesus' name. They thought everything was over, but we are starting life all over again. Verse 4, blessed is that man that maketh the Lord his trust, and respected not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. Many, O Lord, my God, are thy wonderful works which thou hast done. And thy thoughts, which are thoughts words, they cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. Your miracles, innumerable. Outcome of your prayer, innumerable. Exploits in your life, innumerable you begin to see great manifestation of power from today that you have ever seen in your life Isaiah chapter 50 Isaiah chapter 50 I'm reading from verse 10 who is among you that fearest the Lord that obeys the voice of his servant that, walk, that walketh in darkness that has no light. Let him trust in the name of the Lord and stay upon his God because things are going to be different from now on. Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 18. Romans chapter 4, verse 18. Who against hope believe in hope. There's nothing hopeless in your life. Nothing hopeless in your family. Nothing hopeless about your loved ones. You have, uh, you know, somebody overseas and you have somebody far away and they're sending letter, they're sending SOS, help our soul. They say, I'm going through this and that tonight. Write back to them. Things have changed. Because nothing hopeless in your extended family again in Jesus' name. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Barrenness is cancelled. And be not weak in faith. He considered not his own body now dead when he was about an hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. 
he staggered not at the promise of God through belief. No more staggering. I said no more staggering. No more belief. But was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded. Any fully persuaded person here today? And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, tell me, what he had promised, what he had promised, was able also to perform. Today is a day of performance. Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16, verse 25. Acts chapter 16, verse 25. The prayer and the praise of a trusting soul. The prayer and the praise of a trusting soul. Who am I talking about? I'm talking about you. You'll pray and you'll praise the Lord. Look at what will happen. Acts chapter 16, verse 25. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises, prayer and praise unto God. And the prisoners had them. And tell me, tell me how your problem will vanish away. Tell me how the joy will come. Tell me how your body will be rolled away. Tell me how your body will be healed. Tell me how the oppression will vanish away. Tell me how the demon's power will be broken. Tell me how the job will come. And suddenly, there was a great earthquake. Amen? So that the foundations of your prison are shaking. And immediately, all the doors were opened. And everyone's bands on that side, on this side, on that side, over there, everywhere, everyone's bands, my brother, everyone's bands, my sister, everyone's bands, my boy, my girl, everyone's bands were loose. Thank God today is the day. We're coming to point number three now. And we're coming to Psalm 42. Psalm 42. I'm reading from verse 6. Psalm 42. We're looking at verse 6. The priority and the pursuit of a transformed soul. The priority and the pursuit of a transformed soul. Verse 6. Psalm 42. Oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore, will I remember thee from the land of Jordan and of the Hamonites and from the hill of Misa. Verse 11, why hast thou cast down, O my soul, why art thou disquieted within me? Hope in God. My brother, are you there? Hope in God. Dear sister, are you there? Answer me now. Hope in God. Those problems you see today, you'll see them no more in Jesus' name. For I, for I, somebody for I, somebody for I, say it, for I, shall yet praise him. Why, why am I losing your voice? I shall yet praise him. Who is the health of my countenance and my God. Your time has now come. I said your time has now come. It's a priority. It's a pursuit. Look at Matthew chapter 6, and I'm reading from verse 31. Matthew, chapter 6, verse 31. Therefore, take no thought, no anxiety tonight, no worry tonight, no palpitation of the heart tonight, 
Give me good, good. Amen. Amen. No perplexity tonight. No confusion tonight. Therefore, take no thought. Saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that she have need of all these things. Amen. Amen. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And tell me, put your name there and tell me all. I said, put your name there and all. All these things shall be added unto you. All. All. Somebody shout all. all. Romans chapter 8 verse 32. Romans chapter 8 verse 32. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. For us all. How many people? For us all. For how many people? For us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Freely give us, tell me, all things. Tonight is your night. Third John, third epistle of John. I'm reading from verse 2. Third epistle of John, verse 2. Beloved, any beloved child of God here today? Beloved, beloved brother, beloved sister, beloved child, beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper. Look at him, that's talking about me. I said he's talking about me. It's talking about me that thou mayest prosper. Amen. Amen. And be in health. Amen. Amen. Even as thy soul prospereth, you will prosper in everything you do. Amen. Your health will come back to the optimum again in Jesus' name. And your soul will prosper in Jesus' name. As we seek the Lord, we're going to find the blessing of the Lord. Your soul should not be cast down. Your soul should not be weary. You should not be tired of the journey. You should not think that anything is over. Nothing is over. We're starting afresh. New strength. New power. New courage. New blessing. Healing in your body, strength in your soul, power in your spirit, prosperity on your job, and the work of God will prosper in your hand in Jesus' name. Let's rise up today. Today is the day of blessing. Today is a day of seeking after the Lord. Open your mouth, and the Lord said he will fill up your mouth. Open up your mouth, open your mouth, and the Lord says, I will fill you with blessing. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, tell the Lord. Tell your soul not to be perplexed. Tell your soul not to be worried. Tell your soul not to be anxious. Tell your soul not to be hopeless. Tell your soul not to give up. And say, Lord, I'm here today. Today is the day of my blessing. Today is the day of my turning around. Today is the day it will wipe out all my tears. Open your mouth wide and I will feel it. Open your mouth wide and I will feel it. My heart is panting. My heart is longing. My heart is desiring. My heart is after something. I must be blessed today. I must be blessed today. Wilderness experience is over. Desert experience is over. Hopelessness is over. Sadness is over. Here is your day, the day of blessing. Open your mouth wide. Open your mouth wide. 
Open your mouth wide and I will feel it. He brought water out of the rock. He'll bring honey out of the rock for you. He'll bring blessing out of the rock for you. That rock is Christ. Happiness in him, joy in him, revival in him, refreshing in him, power in him, authority in him, healing in him, deliverance in him, hope thou in God. Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel had watched in my ways, as your son have subdued their enemies. The Ammonites will conquer themselves. The Moabites will conquer themselves. Your enemies will conquer themselves. He will turn his mighty hand against your adversary. And the haters of the Lord shall have submitted themselves. They shall have fed them also with the finest of wheat. I was honey out of the rock. Honey out of the rock. Honey out of the rock. Would I have satisfied them? Tonight is the night of your satisfaction. Disappointment is gone. Discouragement is gone. Tiredness is gone. Weariness is gone. All your doubts are gone. He answers every prayer tonight. He answers every prayer tonight. He will not forget you. He will not forsake you. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Hope thou in God. Hope thou in God. Why shall yet press in? I shall yet press in. In the hells of my countenance, he is my God. He is your God. He is my God. He has answered your prayer. He has answered your prayer. Now praise him. Now praise him. Now praise him. Offer him praise. Give him praise. He cannot fail, praise him. He has answered, praise him. He has delivered you, praise him. He has healed you, praise him. He has crushed the enemy, praise him. He has taken your fears away, praise him. He has set you free, praise him. He has given you a new vision, press him. A new power, press him. A new vitality, press him. The Lord is on your side, press him. Now you're making the priority of your life, the pursuit of your life. the center of your life. And you know you are special, special in the sight of the Lord. 
Beloved. 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 Your soul will prosper. Your body will be healthy. And everything you set your hand upon will prosper. Praise him. And make him the priority and the pursuit of your life. Thank him, thank him, thank him. Give on unto him. Exalt him. Magnify him. Praise him. In Jesus' name we pray. And the victorious people of God said, And the hopeful people of God said, And the delivered people of God said, The Lord has answered your prayer. A new strength in your life. From today, you'll go from strength to strength in Jesus' name. Righteousness in your life. Power in your life. Courage in your life. Authority in your life. Victory in your life. It is confirmed in Jesus' name. Raise up your hand for your victory. From tonight, you are more than a conqueror. I said you are more than a conqueror. Victory from now all the way in Jesus' name. Authority of the believer in your life from now on in Jesus' name. Power. I said power. Passion. Authority. Answered prayer joy he will do it through your life and in your life in jesus name father in the name of jesus we thank you for the special place you have placed every believer here tonight and i thank you for the victory thank you for the joy thank you for the power thank you for the breakthrough i pray for every brother and every sister Every promise we have had up today be fulfilled in every life in Jesus' name. Discouragement gone. Disappointment gone. All that pressure, all that opposition gone in Jesus' name. The pain of persecution totally squashed and totally crushed and de totally destroyed in jesus name i pray lord every dry ground will become rivers of living water let, be, let there be refreshing in every life revival in every life renewal in every life and i pray lord all those who are thirsty for your righteousness Fill them up with righteousness in Jesus' name. All those who are thirsty for Holy Ghost power, I pray that your power will come from the throne of God. Come upon them in Jesus' name. Tiredness gone. Weariness gone. Lukewarmness gone. Lethargy all gone. Coldness all gone. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost burn in every heart in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for those who have missed miracles, miracles, miracles. Every time they have prayed, they have fasted, they have had other pray for them, and yet what they were looking for, they didn't get today. 
today. Today is the day of their answered prayer in Jesus' name. Give them the miracle they need. Give them the blessing they need. And I pray, Lord, this blessing will continue. This power will continue. Everybody, without exception, will have a testimony in Jesus' name. We know you have answered. We know you have done it. Give a new song to every believer. We thank you because we know it is done. In Jesus' name I pray.